Hey, what's up folks, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all the way well. And for the past couple of weeks, I've been testing out the new Ryzen 5 and 7 CPU. Specifically here, I wanted to do a comparison between the new 2700X versus the Intel 8700K. Now, a lot of people are gonna be looking into these two CPUs if they're building kind of a higher end workstation grade PC or gaming PC. Both are around the kind of mid $300 mark. So we're gonna take a look at the core specification differences and obviously the performance results when it comes to a general General, multimedia, uh, gaming, and a whole bunch of other tasks. So let's get right into it. Now the Ryzen 7 2700X is not a huge departure from the original 1800X. Both are 8 core chips with 16 threads. There is a boost in terms of the bass and turbo frequencies from 3.7 to 4.3 respectively with the new processor compared to the 1800X which was clocked at around 3.6 to 4 gigahertz. There's also a 10 watt boost in terms of the TDP so the uh, new CPU is rated at 105 watts compared to 95 watts and you have native support for a DDR are 4 memory rated at 2933 compared to the previous generation 2666. Besides those notions, everything else is pretty much identical to the previous generation of Ryzen 7 CPU. So you have the same amount of available PCI Express lanes, the same amount of level 2 and 3 cache, but there's a big difference in price this time around. The original Ryzen 7 1800X retailed for around $499 when it first came out, versus this time around you're looking at $329 and you get the included AMD Prison RGB cooler for the CPU, which is nice. Now, in terms of the 2700X compared to the Intel Core i7 8700K, you can see that both CPUs are actually fairly similarly priced, They're both in the mid 300 range. Now, straight off the bat, the Intel is a six core, 12 threaded CPU versus eight and 16 on the AMD side, but you have higher base and boost frequencies from the factory coming from Intel at 3.7 up to 4.7. And it's also fairly easy to achieve a five gigahertz overclock with without any special cooling requirements. In terms of level three cache, we have 16 megabytes available on the 2700X versus 12 on the Intel side, but both platforms do have the same amount of PCI Express 3.0 lanes, which is about 16. Now moving on, let's talk about the performance differences between these two. We're going to start with Cinebench R15, and here are the uh, stock frequency settings on uh, all three of these CPUs. I've also thrown in the 1800X into the mix, and you can see in terms of the multi-core performance, the 2700X is the fastest. At 1789, we get about 1405 on the 8700K, and about 1627 on the previous generation 1800X. Now moving on, in terms of the single core performance, since the 8700 K from a factory perspective is clocked the highest uh, if you take a look at the Geekbench 4 benchmark you're going to see that it's getting the best score about 5800 points the 1800 X is the lowest clock so it gets about 4500 points versus just under 5000 points on the 2700 X and in terms of the uh, multi-core results you're seeing that the 2700 X since it has the most cores at the highest frequency is winning out as as well, but not by a huge margin compared to the 8700K. Now moving on in terms of more real world task oriented performance results, we're going to do a simple compression test using WinRAR. So we're going to compress about 12 gigs of data and an average run about six times. The 8700K completed the task at the fastest time, about five minutes, 22 seconds versus the 2700X and 1800X got about five minute 32 and five minute 56 seconds respectively. Now moving forward, the next thing that we did was render out a 4K 8 minute file using Premiere Pro and the output render time is laid out right in front of you. The 2700X completed the task the fastest speed at around 6 minutes 35 seconds versus uh, the Intel chip completed that task in 7 minutes 21 seconds and 6 minutes 44 seconds was the time for the 1800X. Now lastly, I'm going to let you guys take a look at the gaming differences between these three chips. We're going to take a look at the uh, Time Spy benchmark with a discrete GTX 1080 Ti as well as Civilization 6 and Far Cry 5.
Now, from a workstation grade perspective, uh, generally speaking, when you have more cores, more threads, you're going to have a more powerful system. And that's certainly the case when you take a look at our performance results. And uh, when you're looking at the price difference and you're going to be doing a lot of multimedia editing, anything with 4K, uh, the advantage definitely goes uh, to the 2700X. Uh, but there's not a completely double performance difference between the 8700K. So Intel definitely has uh, still some pretty good, decent value. And you can generally clock it a little bit higher and it's probably a little bit more overclocking friendly. We're going to do a little bit more of an in-depth PC building guide on the new Ryzen 5 and 7 CPUs, so definitely stay tuned for that. And we're also going to do a comparison between the Ryzen 5 2600X versus the 8600K from Intel, so uh, check out the description down below or click on the card once that video becomes available. But other than that, thanks again for watching, thanks for your support, and we'll see you later. Take care.